Hey guys, Lunchbox Hellrod. I was going to do a video about my 3D printers. I've had them for a while, so I'd figure it's about time to kind of put a review out there. Say what I think, what's good, what's bad, and and my first one. Like everyone, I got my, my DIY in the mail through some Chinese supplier. This is my ANET A2. It's now in a box. ANET has a, ter has a great community, wonderful community. A lot of people can help you out and things like that, but the company ANET itself, not a lot of customer service. I just I kept having problems with it, so I put it in a box. And if you're if you're getting into it and you're brand new, it's actually really good to I don't want to say get a, a bad printer, but get an ANET because you will be fixing it a lot. I had that one for about six months. After that. Picked up this GTEC. This is the GTEC i3 Pro B. Uh, it definitely, to me, was a step up from the ANET. Uh, I know everyone has their opinions, but the GTEC didn't give me a lot of problems at all. Uh, I did upgrade the wiring. I actually wired in a computer power supply with it because it's a lot more safer. My newest one that I've had for almost a year now is the Tier Time Upbox. Plus, this is a wonderful machine. For someone who's had the ANET, GTEC, and you know the, the DIY kits that you've really had to put a lot of time into, the tier time, I haven't had to do much. I do have some problems with it, but it is the best machine for someone who doesn't want to work on the printer all the time and actually wants to spend time printing. Uh, I got it from MakerTree 3D here in North Texas. I'll put a link in the description below. What's up, Sean? The GTEC, same problems as with every other DIY kit around its price range. You know, the, the acrylic frame, the, the, the bed leveling, and, you know, manualness. Hello, GTEC. One of my favorite things about the Upbox is its automatic bed leveling. Uh, the HEPA filter is pretty cool, especially when you're printing ABS. It really does keep the odor of ABS and the cancer out or in. Oh, one problem was like after a couple of months of having it, one of the display LEDs up front actually went out, but it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't affect the performance at all, but you know, whatever. As you can see, it's lit up and it's actually not on right now. That's because I added a set of LEDs up there. The ones that come with it is that one and that one. They're quite underpowered, to be honest. And the, the the shadows that they cast, you, you can't you can see the bed, you can see the bed. But the one that I put on there, it's just a single double strip, and as you can see, it lights it up quite well. Another problem I have is this thing right here. You have nowhere regular spools that you can get anywhere else don't fit on it, no matter what modifications you do to it. It'll fit on the spool but then it won't fit inside this hole. Or it won't fit on the spool, but it'll fit in the hole. This is the filament that's actually made for the printer, and it does fit in there with the cup with the magnetic cover on. Really, my only two main complaints really are how the filament sits in here or doesn't. One thing that I don't like about the Tier Time Up box is how you have to hold this up, or you have to put it in a space that is essentially twice the size of the height of the machine for it to stay open, which you know is fine, but what I what I eventually want to plan on doing is designing some kind of attachment I can put in here that'll prop it up. Because for now, every time I have to work on it, which isn't often, honestly, but anytime I do, I have to wedge something in between the lid and the box itself. I don't like doing that. But, but as you can see, it doesn't stay up. Now, the way the Upbox Hot End is designed, some filaments won't work with it, but a lot of them do. If you guys ever want me to do a longer video on these things and maybe talk about the filaments that can go in them that have been found, uh, let me know and I can do that. Sometimes I stream the printer while I'm not gaming on Twitch at lunchbox underscore Elrod. Hit me up on that Twitter too. Tweet me. This is probably going to be a short video. I honestly don't know how long I've been recording. 
But if you guys are interested in me doing any more of these things, let me know. Uh, I've also do some CAD design. If you want me to do any of these things, let me know. I also do some stuff on uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. Also, for any of you makers that are in the North Texas area, you can join the North Texas 3D Printing Group that I have started. We have a few members there now. It's simply just to get some of us together that are in the area so we can talk about you know, what we're designing, what's going on, tips, pros, cons, and whatnots. Here are some of the first prints that I ever did. Mass Effect gun. This thing. Half of a wildling skull. This is Captain Reynolds' gun when we played a Firefly series. This is one of my uh, first prints that I printed on the G-Tech. It was, uh, at the time, my biggest print. It is the Fallout 4 Mini Nuke. <coughs> What's up guys, this is Lunchbox Elrod. Uh, I was going to make a video about my printer. I've had them for a while now. and. What's up guys, this is Lunchbox Elrod. I'm going to make a video today about my 3D printers. I've had them for a while, so I figured I'd put a review out there because when I first got into 3D printing, there is a lot about it, but there's, there, you know... brands that work for me, you know, and everyone has their opinions. Okay. This is the uh, This This is the G-Tech i3 Pro B. 